For a while Punghuali and her cousin walked in silence on the forest path. Punghuzali took a deep breath and said, Amuda. It seems that you and I have some Janmanthera connection. Who cares now about previous births? Tell me if there is any good news about this birth. Sentin Amuthan said. Isn't it said that the possessions of previous births continue in this life too? That must be true, when I parted from you at the peak today, I thought I would never see you again. I have to see you again in two days. Don't worry about that. I'll be on my way when I cross this jungle road and reach the Tanjava road, and you can go as you please. I am not going to leave you alone like that. I will go to Tanjava with you after seeing my sister-in-law. I am going to seek redress for the suffering that happened to my aunt. I am going to appeal to the Chola Emperor. Do you think it's that easy to reach the Sunidhana of Pungajali Emperor? Can't people like us enter Tanjava fort itself? Why not? If the castle door doesn't open, I'll break it open. If that doesn't work, I'll climb the wall and jump. What will you do with the servants guarding the palace gates? They will be frightened at my shouts and take me to the emperor. Little Palyavatarayar cannot be intimidated like that. People used to talk in Tanjavar pages that even Yaman cannot approach the emperor without his permission. I have heard some say that that is why the emperor is still alive. If I cannot see the emperor, I will ask the Palyavatare themselves whether there is redress for this crime or not. If they do not redress properly, I will go to the Prime Minister Brahmarayar. If that does not help, I will go and appeal to the queens of Palayare. I will not remain in one place until I know what has become of my aunt. Redress for the injustice done to her. I won't sleep day or night until I get it. Didn't my sister-in-law call my aunt a dumb devil? I'll turn into a devil and roam the country and town, justice. I will wander around screaming justice, Amuda, will you come with me? Of course I will come, Punguzali. I will come if you want. But why are you making such a mess of your mind? Have you gone far away? Isn't the most important thing to do is to find and save your aunt? Shouldn't you free her from the evildoers who have captured her? Tell your father, brother, etc. Don't you? What kind of crime is that? I don't even care about my aunt that much. What happened to my aunt today can happen to me tomorrow, right? And many of the virgins in this country have a problem, Allah lava. Sendan Amuthan now interrupted, Yes, such a danger must exist in this country now. Since Sundara Chola made her sick, Dharma has turned upside down in the Chola country. The guard is gone. Where is the danger waiting for the virgins? So it is better to get all the virgins married as soon as possible. He said. Bungujali laughed cheerfully. Amuda. If a virgin marries you, can you save her? Do you know how to fight with a knife? She asked. I have learned to take a flower and light a garland and sing hymns and praise God. I have not learned to take a knife and fight. So what? Didn't you teach me to hold an oar and push a boat? Similarly, I will learn to take a sword and fight. When Madhurandak Deva wants to ride on a lion and rule the kingdom, I is it impossible to learn knife fighting? Sentin Amuthan said. By this time they reached the tree where Pungazali's sister-in-law was tied. That Madarasi is missing there. Sendan Amuthan pointed out to Pung Hujali the drops of blood that had spilled on the floor from the wound on her skull. They are well beaten, it is certain that the sister-in-law was not spying on her captors. But we must somehow find out what else she was spying for. Said Pung Huali. My uncle's daughter. Listen to this. All that has happened here are mysterious things without a cause. Secret within secret. Whirl within whirl. All are matters of the kingdom and the royal dynasty. Why should you and I worry about these things? Why should we embarrass ourselves? Amuda. What great royal matter? What mystery? Can I not be concerned about my aunt? Can you not think of your great grandmother's fate? I tell you what's on my mind, Punguzali. Didn't I say that among the seven or eight people I saw, a girl also went? 
Didn't I also say that she might be my great-grandmother? From the way she walked, it didn't look like she was taken by force. It looked like she had gone of her own accord. Perhaps, Amutha. Be that as it may, such is my aunt's nature. She may have wanted to know where she was being taken. If she had not willed, she would have escaped from among a thousand men. Not even castle walls and dungeons could keep her safe. That is why, of the danger that befell her aunt. I said I was not so much concerned. My chief object was to seek redress for the injustice done to my aunt. That injustice was done today, a cruel injustice done twenty-five years ago. I will not rest until it is redressed. Said Punghuali. My God! How impossible have you let your mind get? Synthan Amuthan said and heaved a long sigh. A voice was heard in the distance, a voice appeared to be a female voice. Amuthan and Pungazali saw the speakers at Tanjavur Rajapat Junction. A sign of disgust was seen on Pungazali's face when she learned that the man who was talking to Annie Rakamal was the son of an old doctor. When Rakamal saw Pungazali, he said, ADI girl. Did you survive? I was afraid that they might have killed you. Look! How big is the injury on my skull from trying to save your aunt? I was asking the doctor's son if there is any medicine for the injury. She said. If there is any injury to Kuryar's daughter, I will treat it with medicine, said the doctor's son. Bungazali did not answer him, sister. Do you know which way they took aunt and went? She asked. This doctor's son says that I did not see Tanjavur along the road. Sister. Amuda and I are going to follow aunt. Tell father. Come, Amuda. Punguzali said and started going from there immediately. Then the doctor's son said, Aungazali. Stop. You cannot follow them. They are going on their horses, which are waiting at a little distance from here. I have a horse. I will leave the horse as fast as I can and find out where they are going and tell you. In return, you will tell me. A favor to be done. Where did you and your aunt get into the boat and set out to go? Just tell me. He said. Punguzali said, sister-in-law. We don't need his help. We are going. Just tell dad. She said. The doctor's son did not give up even then. A.G.A. Look at the pride of Carrier's daughter. Don't you need my help? Girl, why are you so angry with me? I stood in the way and prevented you from marrying the king's son? Did you deceive me and take me on a boat? Wasn't that God who came from the monkey clan and threw the king's son into the middle of the sea according to your desire? He has killed. What is the use of being angry with me? After saying that, he faked a smile and said ha ha ha. Pungazali looked at him awake once with a spark in her eyes and took a mudan's hand and walked up the road. After going a little distance, he said, Amuda. When you have learned to fight with a knife, you must first take the life of this doctor's son, who is Durdha. He is the first victim of your knife. Pungazali Santhan Amuthan also went towards Tanjavur by walking day and night. Eight horsemen en route inquired about a lady being taken away. About halfway through I got some information and then nothing. However, they went as far as Tanjavur to look for it. This journey was very exciting for Sendan Amuthan. A reason to be excited was talking with Pungazali, another reason was that he continued to train in the knife. He was buying a knife from a butcher shop known to Pungazali near Kadakare. He kept spinning it whenever he went. Sometimes he threw the knife erratically thinking that the enemy was coming in front of him and that he was going to fight him. From time to time Pungazali taught him how to hold the knife and how to rotate it. This made the journey exciting for both of them. When the Tanjavur fort appeared in front of his eyes, Pungazali became worried about how to achieve what he had come for. Sendan Amuthan also shared her concern. Entering the fort is a noble thing to do. How to accomplish all the things that Pungujali has planned. Synthan Amuthan remembered all the extraordinary skills of Vandiyadeva. Shouldn't he have a tenth of his skills? Or that Vandiyadeva himself should not come here at this time? 
Sendan Amuthan started thinking how he would have behaved on this occasion if he had been Vandiyadeva. At that moment, there was a fog on the road. It was the time when the sun was setting in the west and it was getting dark. Palm tree images were seen on the screen above the hood. Ah! Doesn't Palvur look like Ilayarani's teeth? How convenient would it be if we could meet the Queen of Palvur right at the fort and get the signet ring? Amudan thought. He told this to Pungaxalai too. She also said it was a good idea. But how do you see the queen inside the mud bullock? Are the guards still going after worship? Don't they block you if you try to go near the Palak? Amuda. Don't worry. Tanjavur Fort is still half a mile away. We'll have no chance before then. Said Punghuali. They got an unexpected shock.